Hey, what's up guys? Nunu here. Today I'll show you how you can create the perfect studio lighting in D5 Render. You can use this to showcase products like an armchair, a sofa, a car, basically any object. So let's get started. Let's start by creating a perfect backdrop. When googling studio lighting, you can see that many use this backdrop that wraps on the bottom. Let's model this first. We will create a plane. In my case I'm using 3ds Max, but you can do this in any 3D model application. On the plane, make it 900cm by 900cm and add one segment under length and width and convert the plane to an editable poly. Select the edge and on the bottom click Extrude. About here it's fine. Now select this edge and apply a chamfer with about 6 intersections so we have a smooth surface. I'm also making sure it's in the origin by checking all the values are zero here on the bottom. And that's it. Just apply material and you are good to go. Since I'm using 3ds Max, I'll now use the D5 Render plugin to synchronize my 3ds Max file with D5. You can find this plugin on D5 Render website. You can just go here to download and then you'll see here a full list of plugins you can download and install for free. After installing it, on the top you'll see this D5, click it and click Start Stop. It will say that the document is not saved, so let's first save it. Now we can click the Start D5. Here just press OK and now select the new method. And here we have our 3D model inside D5 Render. If you're not using software with direct synchronization, you can just click the import button, which is located in the top left corner. Now you can import the backdrop model you just created and place it on your scene. This is looking good, so now let's just adjust the lighting. By default D5 comes with this Geo and Sky, and this will not work for this project. So we can go to a site called Polyhaven, and here click HDRI. On the left you'll see a section that's called Studio and select Artificial Light. I'm going to select this one, Studio Small 09. The 4K is more than enough for this project, so let's go with this one. So let's select HDRI. Click on the drop down and select Customize HDRI. Select the one you just downloaded. Next to the light, do you see this settings icon? Let's click it to open more options. For the skylight, I just want to have a little bit, so I leave it at 0, 1. The background, I don't want any at all, so I'll leave it at 0. The rotate, you can leave it at 0 as well. Color temperature, leave it at default. Let's add now an object. I'm going to select one from D5 Render Pro library. If you want to use the same as me, search for Modern Leather Dining. Let's place it around here. In the camera settings, I'll add a value of 30 on the field of view. Find the best place for your camera. And after you are done, just press F8 to enable the two-point perspective, which makes your vertical line straight. I always disable the auto exposure, so this way I have more control over the lighting and it's not updating all the time. Now, on the top left corner, click on the Add Scene button to start all the settings we just did. You should have something that looks like this. Not flattering at all. Let's first add a color to this backdrop by pressing the I on the keyboard to call the material picker and then clicking on the model. Now, on the right side panel, I'm going to leave all the settings by default and I'll just select the color. Here you can be creative and select which one you like most. Head over to Effect on the top right corner and on the exposure let's make it negative 02. For the contrast make it about 01. And here on the bottom I'll add 0.2 on the bloom. And we are done with the effect tab. Now we need to add some lighting. We'll use rectangular lights for this project and use the three point lighting technique. This is a very popular lighting technique in which you place the lights at about 45 degrees from the subject. You have one key light, a fill light and a rim light. The key light is the most important light, it's the main light source for the scene. The fill light is used to open up the shadows 
Ideally, fill light doesn't have its own shadow as it's a little bit less intense than the key light. And the rim light is a light that works to outline the subject and separate from the background. Go to lights on the top and select the rectangular light. Now go to the top view by pressing T on the keyboard and set it to about 2 meters from your subject at the 45 degree angle. I will set the intensity to 50 and here on the radius to 630 and leave the temperature at 6500 Kelvin, which is daylight temperature. Now switch to perspective view and place your light at about this level and rotate it around 60 degrees on X. Moving on to the fill light, we can duplicate the key light and add it on the opposite side of the key light. You can move it a little bit further from the subject and set the intensity to 10 and radius to 500. As for the color temperature, you can set it to 3200, which is warmer than the key light. Now duplicate this light and move it behind the subject. Place it higher. As for the intensity, set to 60 and color temperature to 12000. This will make this light cooler in contrast with the fill light. And right now this is what we have. It's already looking great, but we will add one last light facing the backdrop so we can have a better infinite background. Add this light about here on the side facing the backdrop and rotate it in a way there is almost no light casting on the subject. Set the intensity to about 115 and radius to about 1000 and let's leave the color temperature to the default values. This looks great, but there is one last thing we need to do. It would be nice if the rim light only gives light on the subject and not on the backdrop. And if I've render already has this in their roadmap to select which objects a light casts on. But for now, since we cannot select that, we will do it in post-production. And before we continue, I would like to let you know that you can sign up for my D5 render course. I'll leave a link in the top right corner and in the description below this video. So let's save this scene by clicking this icon and call it Studio 1. Now let's disable the rim light and save a new scene. Rename it Studio 2. Now click back on the Studio 1 scene and let's take a render by clicking on Image. On the Channels option, select only the Material ID. Now click here on the Render Queue. Next, click on Studio 2 and deselect any extra channels. Now click again on Render Queue. Now you can simply click the Render Queue button on the top right corner and select both images and click Render. Open all three images in Photoshop in the same file. With the magic wand and the material ID layer selected, select the subject to create a new mask. Now with the mask still active, select the rim light render layer and just press the add layer mask button. It's this button down here. Now you see that we have the rim light just on the chair, making the overall image much better. This is a technique that photographers use all the time, so don't be afraid to replicate the same techniques used by real-world photographers. And by the way, don't forget to tag me on Instagram with your studio renders. I'll be sharing the best ones in my stories. And if you would like to create realistic exteriors with DeFi Render, you can check this video about it. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one.